But I think if one really wants to come to what I would call a broad, comprehensive, and faithful understanding of the Buddha's teaching, definitely one has to bring in, I would say, the whole range of teachings. And one especially finds in the Nikayas that the teaching of karmic causation, the other realms of existence, or at least the free birth beyond the present existence, is taken to be a form of samaditi, of right view. And so this is really like a foundation for what I would say the full depth, the range of even the liberating right view, for that liberating right view to be able to culminate in true liberation. It should be based upon the right, the sort of elementary or foundational right view of karma causation and rebirth. Yeah, and okay, you can, you can take the, um, the microphone. Version to this. Um, Tracy, further to your point, <clears throat> um, there's a great sort of big divide in the Buddhist world, especially if you um, look online and look on certain web boards. There's the literal rebirthers. This is a big thing, actually, Bonte, and your name has come up. So <laughs> I don't go on to these discussions. Yeah, yeah. And, and there are the. Occasionally I've picked in, and <laughs> when it comes to what is the expression used here? He does not praise himself and disparage others. I don't know about praising themselves, but I've seen myself disparage pretty, pretty badly. <laughs> Please continue. But, um, okay. And there are the, the literal rebirthers, like, yes, there's the literal rebirth, and the, the, you're stupid, that's not what it really means, and they don't just like, you know, the English dudes, you know, including Bachelor, but also Buddha Dasa, you know, the great Buddha Dasa, yeah. who is according According to his, according to his readings, and I haven't read a lot of him. The base, and I'm really paraphrasing. I'm being very simple right now. Is, well, that's a teaching for babies. There's nothing to be reborn. So essentially, they're saying there's no rebirth or no literal rebirth. Yeah. Well, what are you talking about? And then you take away the whole underpinnings of Buddhism, because then what is the point? And then you're getting down into nihilism, quite frankly. That's, yeah. just, that's just my opinion. Yeah. I'm no yeah. great expert. Um, and the reason why, if, if you've noticed, Bonte, over the months, is what is this? Is this really being? You've noticed, I, I, keep, on, I keep on asking you whenever the word being comes up in English. I've yeah. asked you this before. Watch the Pali. And yeah. It's a literal translation. Because these people say, the word being is never used. Okay, they, they get into that. There's no such thing. It's never ever said in the Pali, the, the, the anti-literal you know, rebirth. Yeah. It's, a, it's a really you know, big deal. They get almost hysterical about it. And yet if you cite, well, golly gee, will occurs all the way over in, in this Nikaya and in that Nikaya, he's talking about rebirth and hell realms. Well, that's not what it really says, or that's an interpolation, or you're just imagining it. So it's like every so often, you know, I don't know if you've been here in class, I've been like, Bonte, what's this word? Because I, I, I really want to know. So it, it's, it's a really big, huge, emotional, yeah, yeah, I, I, and they yeah. cite really Buddha Dasa yeah. a lot because he's much more authoritative than Stephen Batchelor. Yeah, yeah I read years ago a couple of books by Achan Buddha Dasa. And I have to say, I just didn't see how he could be so widely respected as they say the greatest Thai scholar monk of the 20th century. But there's just so much that seemed to be. Wrong it's and like, arbitrary. What Nikayas are you reading? I mean, that's, that's when, when I read them, it's like, what, am I reading something that's so totally different? How come I'm reading ye? You know, it's just, we've had people on, um, I belong to a Theravadan web board. Um, these are good, very serious people. Um, a lot of them are actually down under. They study with, a, what is it, Goemba? Or uh, Goemba? Goemba, yeah. yeah a lot of, they're very serious people. Um, and, uh, Sometimes we have the, the anti-rebirthers report, <laughs> and we have a few scholars who could actually really read Pali and things like that and say, look, and they'll actually bring up, you know, the Pali and it's, you know, and explain it. I, I can't get that far, but it, it's, it's a big deal. So it's, it's good that you brought it up. People should yeah, be aware that it's yeah. a huge thing. Yeah. Yeah. Ajahn Buddhadasa's line was that, when the texts speak about rebirth into different realms, what they're actually speaking about are changes in states of mind. So there's no real rebirth 
from this body into another body, but when it speaks about being reborn as an animal or a hungry ghost or in hell, it just means that the state of mind changes. Um, I, I know Anjan Sumedho, when his, he's, this has been brought up as a, um, if you read his teachings, he, he takes, I guess, a good middle ground approach. It's like, it certainly can mean that. You, you can, it, certainly become, it certainly can mean that. We can become, right now, here and now, an angry ghost, or a, you know, it can certainly happen. But who's to say it can't happen on another realm you know, as well? And then Ajahn Sumedho says, but don't get lost in that. The point is, you know, the practice. Because he doesn't like, you get into the speculation, speculation, and you end up not practicing. Yeah, but I think, well, first of all, about Buddha Dasa's contention that what is meant is the change in mental states. If one looks at the text again and again, where it's describing what happens in rebirth, it says, Kayasa Beda Paramarana which means with the dissolution of the body after death. Right. I mean, so obviously it's not just speaking about a state of mind, but right. leaving behind one body. You're not reading that right, Bonte, or you must not be translating it right, according to them. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how to... You're relying too much on the commentary. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Is that any of them offering? Could, could, maybe I could... Registered to take a poly course with one of them. Learn how to translate properly. Oh, you bet. Okay, so um, yeah, it's kayasa beda paramarana. So definitely, yeah, that was the first point. That I mean, the words are very clear, very straightforward. It's not just the English translation. It's not the. There's no other way to translate that expression unless one has a very original style of translation. And then the other point, as far as the practice goes, you know, the Buddha doesn't just teach being mindful of the present in order to understand what's going on in one's mind or in one's present experience, but the practice also includes ethical behavior. And the way he lays out the map for understanding the, use the expression, the ontological foundations for ethics, you know, the factors of the laws of existence that provide a basis for ethical conduct. It is the law of karma operating from life to life which forms the underpinning to ethical behavior. So of course one can be ethical without believing in karma and rebirth, but the way the Buddha sees actions having an impact upon oneself over the long range, um, to get the long-range perspective on the impact of one's behavior on oneself, one has to bring in that wider dimension of multiple lives, multiple realms of existence. Thank you, Bhante. I sometimes use the analogy. What is that? What is that? Oh, who said bird? Actually, what I drew is the sky with a bird flying through it. <laughs> to see it as a bird, to see the lines as a bird, you have to take account of well, the white space behind it. And so, to see the significance of our actions, it's not enough just to focus on their present actuality, but one has to see them against the broad background. And then the broad, the broad background for Buddhism is the working of karma causation, the law of karma causation. Okay, I think we'll have to stop now and we'll end with this and then I'll continue with this next week. With this into next week. And we can have to continue with some discussion after lunch.
from about maybe 12, 10. Um, if anybody has any questions or wants to discuss some of these points further, we could meet back here at 1210. And now we'll end with the sharing of the merits. Okay, so we share the merits with the devas, the deities, the buddhas or fear spirits, the Nagas, the dragon spirits, and with all sentient beings. Akasatat, ah, let me do it the fast way. Akasatat, Jabumata, Deva Naga Mahitika, Punyanta Nanbodipa, Chirang Rakantu Sasanam. Akasata Jabumata Deva Naga Medika Punyantam Badaya Vichitato Etam Ture Satakari Bhutana Rupea Rupicha Sandhya Sanino Tukha Pamuchantu Pusantu Nibu